We're going to show you how to make one of these jump cars. We're going to do some testing. We'll bring out the diagrams later. I'm considering as an analogy, this is a penny's worth of energy. And that won't change. I'll always be pushing that in as a penny. And as I add these up, they're like a penny, a penny free. So, I'm entering into the gate right now. And it's just, just really not enough power to do anything. Earlier I tested, so I put down one half inch. That's what my penny did the first time with one gate. So let's add two more. And uh, kind of see what the little car is doing already. My jump, gate jumper. And so now I still have my pennies worth of energy that I'm putting in, but now I'm going to be adding some free energy from what I understand would be the definition. And that over five five inches. So we put one penny's worth of energy in and one gate we didn't have anything. And now we have uh, five and a half pennies. That's pretty good economics. So let's reload it. Back there far enough. So to get a uh, efficient gate, even to get to go through one or two, is uh, quite a, a feat for me. Uh, I had a series uh, out earlier in my parts one and two and they had a system this is a further development a better system one two three four five six and seven we'll later go into the construction and parts and materials also so we're coming up there I'm going to put my one penny's worth that doesn't change but the uh, gates themselves see it accelerate now we're up to like 10 10 10 and a half almost uh, so we're getting 10 and a half pennies out for one penny in so let's go up to our maximum I find out that even this is a very efficient uh, gate car jumper jumper uh, gate jumper but uh, it does have a little bit of input resistance coming into the gate and there's a little bit of pullback. We'll go into that after we get our maximum number here and uh, we'll check for input resistances and output pullbacks and so forth. But anyhow, I want to get this uh, this here written down. So it's a real slow. See how it's really kind of slow now. I have to readjust this. So, so the more gates I add to it, then it became less efficient. But uh, I still have a very little bit of input and a large output. Okay, uh, we went up to 11, 11 inches there. And we'll go ahead and test for our input and output resistances. And that would be a negative effect working against the gate. So as a net gain, that's what we're trying to do, have a gain. So anyhow, let's see how this is coming out there. It's, it continues on. There's nothing actually uh, pulling it back. That would be a negative effect and so forth. Anyhow, so there is a little bit. I found out if anything shows up, it shows up in about the five inch range. And I thought I could see the wheel wanting to come back just a little bit somewhere. It was really minor, and as a researcher, I look at things like that, but it's a pretty clean gate. There's definitely a very free continuation from that side. From this side, we normally have it, a resistance going in. So let's see if this design has it so that there's nothing pushing back, which would be a negative effect, and that would work against over unity or my understanding of it. See, nothing pushing back. It's a, just real, real nice coming in there. Okay, so we have more power out than power we're putting in. I just used my one penny's worth, and then, uh, then I'll get 
get quite a bit of a uh, free economics here. So we get a very nice push through there. And I want to go through uh, one more gate jumper, a more simple design, and then we'll bring out the diagrams and explain what I think is going on. I have a another one here, much easier to work with. This is the one I would I would start with because it's just so simple, and you'll see the diagram here later. But uh, we'll test it out, and uh, that's still pretty high. Let's see if we can go a little bit more on that. I use little wooden uh, pieces to raise and lower. And it really works out really well that way too. And adjust it much easier. Okay. This one only has a, uh, some magnets and two pieces of metal, so it really works out nice. Let's see where it's going to start firing at. We'll use the middle of the car. Okay. It goes real, real nice. So we've got about 10 inches on that, so that's, that's a nice efficient one too. Let's see how we go at the gate. So uh, that's one of the things that uh, for over unity, you don't want the summation of what pulls back and the summation of what resists. If this summation is much, much lower than the thrust in the positive forces going through the gates, then that's what I understand would be over unity. Uh, many times they'll show you know what goes on through this part but they don't show you earlier you know if it's being pushed back or later on being pulled back also and uh, my parts one and two had a design that did have a little bit of resistance and pullback and every time I added a gate it would even get worse it would add up so I could only go through one or two gates with my other design so this is a much better model. Okay, I'm going to go show you how this is all constructed. Get this nice and level. You should have it so what I do to level it, I'll run it through the one way and uh, then I'll turn it around and run it through this way. And they should be, you know, just basically the pretty much the same. And I thought, well, it would be nice to have this travel 10 inches or so and then instead of turning the car, if you had this top part on a nice uh, low friction uh, disc and turn it around and just like with a feather, then you could run it back and that would even be more, uh, uh, more visual that there's something happening here. You'd run it 20 inches or so and all I did was just barely turn this part around. So uh, let's bring out the diagrams and see what we think maybe. Where we'll be going on here. I used a uh, thing I got here at Walmart, very low friction wheels. If you have a little wheel, it doesn't do as much travel, and if you have a wheel that doesn't want to turn very freely, of course you don't get the travel. I sanded this down real smooth too. So anyhow, we'll go into some of the theory, and if you have a magnet, I've got north and south, and you come into the center of it, ooh, come into the sides. If you get right in the middle, there's a neutral zone. And that's shown here. All the forces are equal pulling each way, but if you get off to the side, see how that locks up there? It jumps over and locks up. Well, that's been the problem with researchers. These doggone uh, lock-up points. They're like, a, if this is a river, this is my boat, they'll come along and they hit the first dock and uh, can't get free of that, and they hit the second dock. It just doesn't work. So I thought, boy, if you could access this jump area without that locking up, you could have a uh, potential power source. So I made a little monopole. The monopole is basically, I have this iron nail coming down from the north face. It draws that face down. Otherwise, there's a lot of forces, strong forces, the south and north poles are up in here wanting to lock and pull in any kind of iron product that's coming by. <laughs> so anyhow, this draws that down out of that uh, forces there and has a monopole. This is more or less bringing your north pole down by itself. Effectively, 
isolating it. So with a, that, we have a, a very strange principle come about. This is north, this is north. Normally they would repel, but if you keep far enough above it, <laughs> we'll see the nail doesn't, doesn't repel, but actually just pulls right through, goes through the first dock. Our boat does not even lock up at the second dock. It just keeps on going. If you get too close, uh, you can see that Porsche resistance. And that side, you can see it pulling back. Well, on our car, you saw that that wasn't the effect. It was just coming through and keep on going. So, anyhow, this is what I did. Uh, that's this part here. You can see that how that's coming through there. Okay, I'll get into our diagrams. What I did, I wanted to get at that kick area. And so what I did, I tried to, these, these are shielding the uh, jump area in here. So I wanted to get rid of these shields. This is actually like the input resistance and the output pullback. So the magnetic fields will follow the line of least resistance. So I put some iron nails in there, as you, or iron, iron plates. And you can see what I did with this model or the other model. They're both basically the same. And uh, so I brought that down, that left that unshielded. I put that center bar in there and that further lifted this north and south out of there and even though I still have a neutral zone right in the center of this metal <laughs> you know it's just not there practically it's so thin so that's what produces that through there okay. here's the I'm going to bring this up closer to make sure you'll be able to see this this is a diagram of the first one and all the parts you can get the iron at uh, fabricating shops, auto body stores, steel distributors, that type of thing. So that's that one there. The top gates, these are half inch uh, by two and a half inch round mild steel. These are made up of one eighth by one half Neos. There's four in a pack. And after you get up into I have nine there. You get up 11, 12, that type of thing, then it stalls out. But uh, if you keep that under there, uh, it works very efficiently. It shows up uh, over unity as I understand it. And uh, so I want to bring out the diagram of the second one. This is what I would start out with. It's a much simpler version. And uh, you can see how it's made up there. If you move this back and forth, you can adjust input output resistances. These just slide back and forth for input output resistances. Everything seems to have to have it pretty well uh, matched up for it to work really well. So that's this one here. You can see the front and the back. Put it on that little uh, hot wheel type thing. So there that is. I thank you for watching and I say seeing is believing but doing is even better. So happy, hope you have a lot of fun.